There's a satellite in orbit right now that is uh, taking pictures of uh, fixed places in our galaxy. We've found uh, several planets out there that are very much Earth-like. In other words, water could exist. These planets are thousands of light years away. So while I've never seen aliens, um, I don't think they've ever visited the Earth. Uh, is it possible for life to exist elsewhere in the universe? Absolutely. There are so many things to do up there. And, and if you ever are bored, uh, look out the window. I call looking out the window down at Earth sort of like sitting around a campfire and looking at it. You just can't take your eyes off it. Every time there's a new adventure, you look, you try to make out parts of the continents, you see if you can detect something that's actually man-made versus naturally made. Looking at the Earth or thunderstorms in the, uh, at night is just one of the most amazing things you can do in space. Study hard, stay in school. Um, uh, math, science, very important fundamentals. Um, you know, NASA for several years had a couple different ways to become an astronaut. One, you could become a military pilot and become a test pilot. But then when the space shuttle came around, we found new and uh, innovative ways to bring people who had uh, degrees in medicine, degrees in um, geology, uh, biology, because there was a lot of research that was now to be, to be done in these orbiting laboratories that we've been building for the last 30 years. So a uh, hard science degree is uh, absolutely essential. Uh, it's great if you're a pilot, but it's more important that you study as hard as you can and you stay in school. We compact it as much as we can. There is no trash compactor in space. But we keep it inside uh, plastic bags to keep it as odor free as long as possible. And then we pack it in uh, Russian containers uh, and uh, these Russian containers are about the size of a small trash can. We put all of our trash in a, a Russian Progress unmanned cargo vehicle. Uh, when it's full, we detach it and we let it burn up in the atmosphere. So uh, we don't just throw it out in space, we make sure that we, uh, we bring our trash back down to Earth, or at least we vaporize it in the Earth's atmosphere. I absolutely love space food. You may have conjure up images of early on astronauts eating um, paste out of, a, out of a toothpaste dispenser. Space food is not like that anymore. Uh, they go to great lengths to uh, keep morale up because you know the food that you eat actually improves your mood. Uh, they do a great job of uh, giving a, a wide variety of, of diet selections. Uh, my personal favorite um, was uh, seafood gumbo and crawfish etouffee. By far, the hardest part of space travel is preparing for it on Earth. I used to tell my crews before we launched on a space shuttle mission that the one year of investment that you put into that two-week mission is the hardest part, and getting ready to launch, that's like your birthday. That's when it's time to open the presents and go and execute the plan that you've planned meticulously for the last year. So the answer to the question, is it technically possible? Absolutely. With today's technology, we can, uh, we can launch a human uh, venture to Mars. Now, it'll be very, very expensive. And we will have to you know, justify that, that huge expenditure, likely by en enlisting the collaboration of the spacefaring nations of the globe uh, to do it jointly. Actually, um, NASA has created what they call design reference missions that involve um, Pre-positioning fuel, pre-positioning a habitat, uh, pre-positioning a communication system, and a return device in, in Martian orbit. Claire, I think that is an absolutely wonderful idea. Uh, there are places on the moon where we have uh, water in the form of ice embedded inside the lunar regolith. Of course, water is an essential building block to sustaining human life, and being able to extract that water uh, out of the lunar regolith and use it to drink, to, um, to disassociate into oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen to breathe and hydrogen to use for fuel. Uh, I cannot think of a, of a next natural step that mankind can take off the planet other than to set up a permanent colony uh, on the moon.
I feel as though we can't afford not to do it. Uh, as you had mentioned, we're not doing a wonderful job of taking care of our planet here on Earth. Um, I wonder if perhaps, you know, we always expect the best, but you know, sometimes bad things happen. And is it good to perhaps sit out and maybe make a place that somebody can go um, in the event something bad happens on Earth? So and that's not the only reason to go, but that is a reason to consider sort of a preservation of the species theory. And uh, I, I, I personally believe it's a great insurance policy for the human race. My name is Christopher Ferguson. Uh, I'm a former NASA astronaut, and I've uh, flown on uh, three different shuttle flights. I now work for the Boeing Company as the Deputy Program Manager for Operations for the CST-100 Starliner Commercial Crew Program.